Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 2.21. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk about hooking up a basic MIDI controller so that we'll have access to a couple of sliders that we can then control with our hands and not always have to be flipping around and pulling things up and down. So that's the goal of this. You don't need to have a MIDI controller to do what we're going to do, but it will be somewhat helpful. That being said, I do encourage you to still watch the next couple of videos because we're gonna be doing some setup that regardless of if you have a MIDI controller or not, I think it's still going to be helpful um, to do it, at least watch the videos to see what I do. So I have a Korg Nano Control sitting here on my desk and believe it or not, just about five minutes ago, somehow I managed to drop it and so I've lost a few pieces to it. However, it still seems to be working. Uh, this seems to be a pretty sturdy MIDI controller here and we can still do what we wanna do with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead now, plug it in into a USB port. And I'm turning knobs, I'm doing all sorts of things, but nothing seems to be working. So I'm gonna head up to my options, select preferences, jump over to controllers. And now if you have a controller that's supported by Bitwig, you can click on detect available controllers, and you'll see these are all the ones that they've supported, and have basically just pre-mapped to different aspects inside of the software. That will all make more sense once I do that. I think they're planning to add more and more as time goes on. For right now, the list is kind of sparse, but if I go ahead and click detect available controllers, my Korg Nano Control has shown up. And one little handy feature is you can click this question mark, it will send you to a page from their website, and you can see um, a little bit of how they plan to arrange it. But for now, not that important. So I'm just gonna click OK, and right away, suddenly we have this beautiful colored display. So maybe if I turn one of these sliders, we'll see something happen. Aha, something is happening. So obviously this first slider is con controlling the low frequency um, amount. So if I'm playing back here, See, this one's controlling our uh, cutoff frequency there. Pretty cool. That one's not really gonna have much of an effect until I pull this back up. All right, cool, so if you have one of these connected controllers, you can check this out, see how it works. You'll notice though that I don't have any control over my mix parameters right now. So even if I'm not looking at this, I pull this down, maybe I'll even pull up a different view. So I'm just gonna yank this down for right now. And I'm still turning stuff, I'm not having any control over my relative pan or anything for deck one or deck two, and that's not what I want. I pretty much wanna be able to map this to whatever parameter I see fit. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna go back to my preferences here and I'm going to just X this out. I don't want to use their mappings that they've already made. Instead, what I'm gonna do is select Add Controller Manually, I'll go to Generic, and I'll choose Keyboard plus eight device knobs. Now what I can do is I can open this up. Oh, there's my uh, Korg Nano Control right there, and hopefully it should still be working and shouldn't have these default settings enabled. So let me just check and see. Yep, I'm turning these now. Um, the colors are gonna stay there, but it's not having any impact at all. Now inside of Bitwig and really inside of any program you always use, it's a good idea to right click everything and just see what comes up. So in this program, you're gonna see when I right click something, even like this volume fader, I have a learn controller assignment. And now if I click that, I'm gonna get this spinning little green indicator, which is waiting to get MIDI input. And once it gets MIDI input from one of these sliders or one of these knobs or buttons, that's what it's going to be mapped to. So I'll just turn this. And now I have control using my first slider. Let's see what else I can map. Let's see if I can uh, do this as well. Okay, very cool. Maybe I have a couple buttons I could use. I think I can map this. Maybe not.
interesting. So I can't map the uh, solo button for whatever reason. I'm not sure if that's a glitch or what, but I can map the mute button. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm a little confused about that. So I have this hooked up with one of my buttons here. Okay. And additionally, if I wanted to, I could map my play button, my stop button, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now if I'm playing this back, and I wanna just turn down or up the volume, can use that. If I wanna throw it to the left or right, I can do that. And for right now, that's all I want you guys to know. I don't even necessarily want you to have any of this mapped. I'm gonna go back here and I'll click clear controller assignment. Let's clear this controller assignment and we'll clear the controller assignment on the mute. So that's all I wanted to cover. I hope that was somewhat helpful. If you do have a MIDI controller, now is the time to plug it in, see if you can get it working by just you know trying to map a couple of faders or knobs. And in the next video, we're actually gonna look at the most logical, at least in my opinion, the most logical way to set up controlling some of our different devices and stuff when we're performing live. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you again in the next lesson.